Hey, how's it going? Welcome to QTV number 10. So in the last video, we covered modifying the query filters, and then we distinguished prompts from filters. And in this video, we're going to cover all the concepts that we've learned from all the prior videos and create an ad hoc report from scratch. So ad hoc is a Latin phrase meaning for this, and generally its English context is that of a solution designed for a specific or particular problem. In the context of the business objects application, what it means is that we're designing a report from scratch. So back at the home page, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a small little button for Create Ad Hoc Report. Let's go ahead and click that. So the first option you'll see is Select Universe. And a universe is the semantic layer that resides between an organization's database and the end users. And if that doesn't make sense, it's more importantly a business representation of our data warehouse. So think back to the query panel. Remember on the left side you have the universe outline. And that's all that a universe is. It's a collection of data elements that map back to the data in a database, but do so in a way that's hopefully more understandable to the end business users. Every report is thus based on a universe. So the training workspace that we've been using had a couple of canned reports. And those were actually mapped from the training universe, which we saw on the query panel. So let's go ahead and select the drop-down menu that says Select Universe. And I'm going to scroll down to the training universe. And once we get there, I'm going to go ahead and select that. And there's also two optional fields for us to fill out. We can give the report a name, and you can also give the report a description. And these two pieces of metadata are going to be visible whenever you access the report from the Business Objects Document Explorer. And once we're satisfied, we can go ahead and select Create Ad Hoc. And as a result, you should see that a third tab appears in the top left-hand corner with the name that you provided on the previous screen. All right, so now that we're in the report, remember the first thing that I do is go into the top right-hand corner and select the Design View. And you can see right now that we have a blank template for a report but we need to go into the Query Panel first to increase our pool of available objects to report on. So again, the path to get to the Query Panel is the Data Access ribbon, and under the Data Provider section, I select the Edit button. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the view of my Query Panel so that I can see everything, and you'll see that we already have one object in the Result Objects. And this is because a report by default is required to have at least one object. Now, if you don't want that object in there, with the object selected, go to the top right-hand corner of the Result Objects panel and select the blue X button. All right, so now we have a clear canvas to design our report. So it's good practice when you're starting from scratch to consider what is it that you're trying to report on. And dimension objects, remember, provide the basis for analysis in a report. So that being the case, I personally prefer to start with dimension objects first. And this helps get a better logical understanding of what it is that you're reporting on. So I'll start in the Entry folder. And then I'm going to go down to the Entry Line folder and select a few more additional objects. And what this means is that the data in my report is going to be looking at the Entry Line level. Afterwards, you can add the Measure Objects in, because remember, Measure Objects, those act dynamically with Dimension Objects to run calculations on the data. So even though the order doesn't necessarily mean anything, this gives us a good logical understanding that we're actually asking, what's the number of entry lines associated with each unique combination of entry type, country of origin, and the first two digits of an HTS code? All right, and so the next step is to set some filters to help us identify the scope of the data that we're looking at. So let's say I had a couple of countries I was looking at specifically. I could do country of origin code. I'll leave the operator as in list so I can pick a few values. And then I'll go to the define filter type button and select values from list. We'll then get that list of values dialog box, which is similar to the prompt dialog box. And I'll go ahead and add a few country of origin codes to my list of values. And once we're done, hit OK. All right, so let's say that in addition to the countries, I wanted to look at certain chapters of the tariff. We'll go ahead and grab HTS number, first two. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and repeat the steps for the first filter. We'll leave it as in list and then do a values from list. We'll go ahead and select a few chapters. And while I'm doing that, just a quick clarification, the first two digits of an HTS number indicate a chapter. All right, then I'll select OK. And now we're going to include one more filter. Since it's always a good idea to limit our results to a specific time frame, let's go ahead and bring an entry date. Now here I'm actually going to change the operator. Since choosing every individual date from a list of values would be a little bit tedious, let's go ahead and choose between so we can provide our own date range. And again, with date objects, the constant box is going to provide you a calendar menu icon. So I'll go into the calendar menu for the first box, and this is going to determine the beginning date range. The second box, which is the end date range, we're going to go ahead and leave that alone since it's currently populating today's date. Okay, and now I'm ready to run the query. And so we're back at the report screen. Now remember, the query is not going to automatically populate into the table. The query is the set of instructions that we send to the database to retrieve the data, and the report is how we actually display that data. So like before, we'll have to drag the objects into the report. Now if you remember in QTV8, if we hold down the control key, we can actually select multiple objects at the same time. And the order that we select these objects is actually going to determine the order that the objects are displayed from left to right in the table. And once I've chosen all of my objects, I'm going to go ahead and then drag them over to that empty column header. And that's it. We've created an ad hoc report from scratch. And that's going to do it for QTV10. In the next video, we're going to cover how to set up a report on a recurring schedule.